Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be sharing with you my five top tips for using an airbrush, but predominantly on how to use an airbrush to create a soft, out of focus, simple background. Now the first thing that I would like to mention is in order to create this type of background you don't need an expensive setup and at the end of this video I'm going to be sharing with you my very first beginner airbrush which would be perfect for this type of effect and then I'm also going to be sharing with you the one must have item that I would recommend any airbrush artist have. But for now, let's jump into tip one, and that is to work with a smoother surface. Now, I personally don't like working on something as smooth as glass, but for me, I do still like there to be a little bit of that canvas texture showing through, but not a really rough sort of canvas. So for me, I wanna go with something that's a little bit in between. This will help to give more of a smoother effect with that airbrush, which is of course what we're going for. So if you're working with a smoother surface initially, it's gonna be easier to achieve that. Regardless if I'm using a pre-stretched canvas or a canvas board, I will always apply two to three coats of gesso to that surface and then lightly sand each surface once it's dry so that I can smooth out that canvas to the type of texture that I want. So tip two, and that is to get your first layer of paint on that canvas. You want to get rid of that white gessoed layer first. Don't focus on any real layers after that, no depth that we're trying to build up, it's just purely blocking in that color. So you can see here that I've added a little bit of the sky blue at the top, and then I've basically just put a standard sort of sap green color for the rest of the background. Once that's dry, I can then start to build up my layers. And that brings me on to tip three, and that is how to build up those layers. Now, just like when I'm working with fur, I have a little bit more of a structure to the layers when I'm working with my airbrush. So you can see here that I'm really focusing on where I want my lights and my darks. So here I'm darkening up the bottom section of that canvas, but more importantly, I'm building up my layers gradually. And this is really important. We don't want to be jumping between our lights and our darks all of a sudden because the background's going to look harsher. We want all of these transitions between the highlights and the shadows to be soft and subtle in order to give the impression of this out of focus effect. So before I jump into tip four, if the video and the tips and techniques that I've shared so far have been useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference. So tip four, and that is how to hold the airbrush. Now this is quite important because how you hold that airbrush will give you different results. When you're trying to create an out of focus soft background as I am here, you wanna be holding it a little further away from your canvas. So for me typically here, I have it about six to eight inches away from that surface. That's gonna make that edge of that paint when it lands on that surface more dispersed. The closer you hold that airbrush to the surface and then apply that pressure to the trigger to get that air and paint to come out, because it's already much closer to that surface, you're gonna end up with more harsher lines. And of course, there are many cases where you want that effect. So you would want to then be putting your hand closer to that surface, but not for something like this. Ideally, hold that a little bit further away and get that nice soft edge. Now this layer here is a prime example my hand is still about that eight inches away from that surface but my edges to that color that I'm applying are soft. Now what I've just done here, now this is not really a tip but it's something that I've done for this painting, is I applied my transfer lines to this first so I could see where I wanted my cat positioned and then I've added some more specific lights and darks around that subject. Now this is something that I will do if I want more of my highlights and shadows in a specific place. So for instance, if one of the ears was dark, in order to get that to show up a little more, I might potentially add a bit more of a lighter green next to that ear to make that ear stand out, which is exactly what I've just done here. So that is something that can be really useful. If you want the lights and darks to be in a very specific place, once you've got your background about 50, 60% done, put your outline on that surface and then continue working with that airbrush. We're gonna be painting over these transfer lines anyway, so it doesn't matter if your airbrush paint goes over your transfer lines. So continuing on with tip four and how to hold the airbrush, try and hold that airbrush upright at all times and parallel to your surface. 
You can see here the few seconds before that I had a slight tilt to the left hand side with that airbrush. That's only a minimal amount of tilt that I was doing with my hand, but you never want to be turning the airbrush on its side because of course you'll tip the paint out of that mixing well at the top and it will land all over your painting. Honestly, I've done it myself. You'll only make that mistake once, but once you get into that habit of always holding it upright so that your mixing cup is upright, you're not then going to accidentally spill any of that paint over your painting. Okay, so on to the last tip and tip five is the needle size. Now I wanted to include this in this video because it does make a difference to the effect and the background that you're going for. If you're trying to create the softer outer focus effect as I am here, you wanna be working with a larger needle. So I recommend something like a 0.35 or a 0.4. That's a really good size to work with. And that's because a thicker needle allows for a greater volume of paint to leave that airbrush so that you get better coverage quicker. Now let's say you did want to start painting grass and hair, any kind of fur with your airbrush, that's when you want to be going down to your thinner, smaller size needles. But if you've got any questions about that, then of course pop them in the comments below. I'm more than happy to help if I can with the experience that I've got when using my airbrush for those kinds of details. So at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that I would share with you the very first airbrush that I had. And this is an airbrush that I would recommend any beginners, anyone who's looking to get into airbrush would maybe consider because it worked beautifully. Now with this airbrush, you can't change the needles. It does come with a 0.35 millimeter needle and that's perfect for this. The airbrush that I'm currently using is an upgraded system and it does allow me to change my needle sizes. However, I mainly do stick with a 0.35 and a 0.4 because this is the type of effect that I like to create with my airbrush. I don't personally use it really for painting grass or fur or anything like that. I do that with my brushwork. So I also mentioned the one item that I would recommend any airbrushing artist have, regardless if you're only doing it for five minutes or five hours. I would always recommend to wear a mask. Now I personally wear something that's similar to in the corner here, which is a respirator. And I just think for me, it's, it's worth it. I don't wanna be breathing in any of that paint. Now, even if the paint brand says that it's non-toxic, I still don't want to be breathing that in. I don't want that coat in my lungs. So I would always recommend to wear one of these. It's so important. And the reason why I do find it's quite deceiving when you're airbrushing, you think that most of the paint is landing on that surface, which is absolutely right. But if you take a step away from your easel, it will sometimes look like there's a little bit of a mist around that part of the room. And that's because the paint, it comes out so fine, it can sit in the air for a little while before it lands on a surface. Now that might only be a fraction of a second or a couple of seconds, but you do wanna make sure that in that time that you're not breathing in any of that paint that is floating about. So as I've said, and I can't stress that enough, a mask is something I would really recommend to get. Now, obviously that's gonna be more extreme if you're working with your airbrush for a much longer time, and especially if you're working on a larger scale. So if you've got more of that paint that's being forced out of that airbrush, you are gonna notice it more than someone who's using an airbrush for smaller, finer details, where you're holding that airbrush closer to the surface. But for me, it's just a habit that I've got into. As soon as my airbrush comes out, the face mask goes on. So I do hope this video has been useful. If it was, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to get notified of all the content that I upload, hit the subscribe and the bell button. Now you can see here I've had a couple of clips playing of me working on this cat. So if you would like to paint along to this full tutorial, I have it available on my Patreon channel. You get the reference photo, liner and full material list. So as I've said, if that or any of my other slower tutorials in pastels or acrylics are of interest, I will link my Patreon in the description below.